Alrighty, hi guys, and welcome back to Coffee with Kira. Today, we are joined by such a cool guest. She had her first big debut as an artist with her song Stay with Kygo. She was on The Weeknd's album. She's written for major artists, Celine Dion. I mean, I can go on and on. She's like one of the most brilliant singer-songwriters that I know. And actually, she was one of the first people that I met when I moved out here to LA mm. six years ago. So we go way back. Way back. But guys, this is Maddie Noise. Hi, Yay. guys. Thanks for having me. I'm of so course. excited to hang out. I'm talk with you i'm so excited i feel like we like i said we go way way back Mm -hmm. and we used to have like the same management and like a bunch of stuff which we'll dive into Mm -hmm. but um i always like to start these podcasts with kind of like a mental health check Mm -hmm. just how are you feeling in yourself right now you Uh, know yeah personally i am feeling really healthy i'm feeling overall pretty good um kind of just doing the best i can you know i'm okay okay some days are great some days are a little hard Harder, but I found like the older I get, the more I can deal with the waves of life better. Oh, for they sure. They used to get me down a lot more mm-hmm. and be more brutal for me. And now it's kind of like, okay, this sucks, but we're riding it, you know? Yeah, so like I'm happy to be in that place now. Yeah. I also feel like just the older that you get, we're yeah. the same age, but like the less fucks you give yeah. and the more that you're like, okay, it might be a low right now, but we're going to go back up the at some point. The highs are coming. The they always are, do. That's life. Yeah. Just keep keep the ball rolling mm-hmm. and, and don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah. But um, it's good to hear that you you're doing good though you got to find the little things that make you happy you know like for me as much as just taking a bath can like turn my whole mental state around I love baths you know water is my happy place so that's kind of me too but I thought that was like a Pisces thing you're a Virgo I love water I love scuba diving I love swimming like if you go on vacation with me and let me loose I'm gonna be out there all day (laughs) let me into the wild (laughs) I'll be just a little dot like a mile away (laughs) is that Maddie I feel like when I first met you though like you were such like a little like fairy energy Mm -hmm. and like even with like your hair and everything like and just like who you were and once again moving to LA as a New Yorker everyone's so serious and like yeah you know don't smile don't be just like happy and I feel like when I met you I was like she just seems so like light and fun and happy I'm a Mississippi hippie you know (laughs) you can't take that out of a girl like growing up in the south having that like that instilled in you even if you move to LA you just want to bring sunshine to people out here and remind them like it's good to be like hey how's it going I love that smile open doors and mean it yeah and and you are from the south Mm -hmm. so becoming like an artist and also you're like bisexual and Mm -hmm. fluid pan like you're just you're like if I like you I like you which is how I am too totally um but how is that like growing up in the south like what was your journey even of like coming out did you come out or no I've never really come out but you don't I, have to come no, out either, I, mean, I always say. It's always been something that I've never been, like, ashamed of or afraid yeah. to talk about. But I've never, like, gone out of my way to bring it up. Yeah. But I kind of do recognize that maybe it's something that would be good if it could help one person out there, mm-hmm. you know, feel more comfortable in their skin. Yeah. Growing up in Mississippi, um, you know, like, growing up, you would kiss girls and do stuff. But maybe back then it didn't register to me yet what it was. Mm. Because even though I'm a very fluid person, I've also had, like, an innocence about me. But still contrasted with that I've always been very sexual I know so I it's like kind of like a weird mix of like I'm not looking at the world in a sexual way but if you capture my heart that way I will go there with you I so like it's not like I'm really always seeing or looking out so I think at first I kind of was just like I remember thinking the first girl I was like oh my gosh was Jessica Alba growing Jessica up Alba? yeah she was my okay. first like girl crush she's hot she's really hot yeah and I was like but I didn't really ever think into like what does this mean really yeah And then, like, I ended up falling for a girl later on and realizing, like, okay, yeah, it's not just having fun with my friends. Like, there's definitely something more here. Your, like, feelings behind it. It wasn't just, like, fun make out, but we're still friends. It's like, oh, wait, I could actually, like, have feelings for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so do your parents know? Or, like, was it just... (laughs) Uh, I don't that know. Look, you were like, I don't like. I don't know if they know. I feel like they don't. At this point in my life, they don't really wouldn't care. Yeah, like Growing if you brought up, a girl home for Christmas next year. Right. Like if, if I was single, if, if you were yeah. single and you brought a girl home yeah. for Christmas, like mm-hmm. would they just be like, cool? Now, yeah, I think my parents are such fans of me now and like the person that I've grown into that yeah. they would support me. Yeah. Growing up, you know. It was a little different. We grew up like a very strict, religious, small town. But it's really cool to see parents evolve. And it's oh really God, yeah. awesome to hold a place for them to, instead of looking at them a certain way,
certain way or holding a grudge against them. Instead, challenge them to grow and and open that space for them to grow and and encourage it. For so sure. I've I mean, seen a lot of change in my parents. You know, good. growing up, my parents would drug test me to make sure I wasn't smoking pot, and now my mom has one of the first. How often? Uh, they would drug test me maybe every few months when I was 15, 16, because they were really worried about. Did me. they like catch you, and that's why they started, or they, it was just like, oh, we need just to just hearsay, just like, oh, it's homecoming week at school, people are probably smoking. Let's let's test her, you know. Ew. And it wasn't just pee; they did blood as well before. So they would like. Well, bring they were doctors, guys. So, so they also like, had access to all this. It's okay, I'm a doctor. So, so at home. I'm no, guessing. at the office. Okay. Yeah. So you would go Come in to your school. parents. They would take your, have you pee in a cup, take your blood. And then, so did the results ever come back positive? It's kind of funny because the first time I ever smoked weed mm -hmm. was the first day I got drug tested. It was the morning before one of the days at homecoming. Oh and I went God. by this, like, it was this older guy that me and my friends were friends with. And he had yeah. an apartment. We like, went by and smoked out of this elephant pipe. And I went to school and all was good. And, um. I got a text from my mom that said, come by today after school for a drug and alcohol screening. And my heart just dropped. And I started Googling, like, like how can I, I was, like, so young. I was like, how can I get it out? How can I get it out? I literally had a girlfriend of mine that was on the same ADHD medicine as me pee into a condom. And I tied it up. Daddy! <laughs> put it in my leg. Yeah, because I had no choice. I was terrified. Like, what's going to happen? She peed into, into a, a condom. condom. But then they ended up taking the blood anyway. But because it was my first time, it didn't show on the test. Because it didn't even take yet. Into my, my mind blood. right but what now. What are the odds that the first time you smoke is the first day you ever get drug tested? I was like, are you serious? My mind right this now is, is my so life. freaking blown. And that is like such a crazy situation. Like, why is the world like that? The first time that you're just like, I'm a teenager. I'm going to have <laughs> fun <laughs> and, and smoke a little, you yeah, know? Yeah. And that's the day that your doctor parents decide to... <laughs> <laughs> Take your urine. That you then got doctor what? Parents. What do you call them? Doctors. Yep. Doctor your parents pa that are doctor doctors. Parents. <laughs> well, damn. But now, so they've they've calmed down a little bit. My mom literally uh, just opened one of the first women-owned dispensaries in Mississippi to help people help get them off uh, stronger drugs and find more natural solutions. Wow. So yes, I would say th things have come a very far Good way job, mom. in the Noise family. Well, not for her. She has a different last has name. Has she now. ever smoked? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Who was the most powerful? Weed? Weed smoker among the three of you. We don't smoke weed. We love it, but that's like honestly, parents. I play like, the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> but my parents, I mean, you've met them. They're very like hippity dippity. But yeah. they, you know, some people might think they were always, always as open or just like yeah. as accepting. And like I remember, it wasn't a drug test, but like even being younger and being mm -hmm. a girl, I wanted to be more tomboy. And I remember my dad would just like kind of make me feel some type of way and like yeah. not want me to be in like stuff that I would want to wear. Mm. Which people, I, I've never even actually said that before, but it's like people would never think that. And like right. you can look back at things that your parents did when you were growing up. And it's just like as long as they're growing because yeah. they're human too. Yeah. Like they're going to make really mistakes. Are. Yeah. If anything, they're like projecting from what like they're going through or what their parents did to mm -hmm. them. So like it's so good to see that growth. All you can ask for is like constant evolution mm -hmm. and to think of like how open I am right now and, and if I had kids I'd be so accepting yeah but we can't even imagine how our kids 30 years from now will change and blow our minds in ways that we don't even understand right now oh, because we're just like you know working with what we got yeah so yeah I'm excited to see that one day yeah. when the you're time gonna be comes a great mom. Thank you're you. gonna be like I'm really you're gonna excited be a cool fucking I want to like do art with my kids oh and, I already you know, see teach it. them like harp and stuff I don't oh, even play harp and but I'll learn <laughs> teach them <laughs> I'm sure you can and yeah. or sing along to I, I don't know. Up. But that's like one of the most interesting things about you too, I would say, is like your style and even like your house. Like I wanted to ask you this Aww. question because I saw like, it looked like an MTV like house tour. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's wild. It was so cute. But like some of the things that you have in your house, like there were like penis shaped something. Yes, my penis shaped <laughs> little animals. I love phallic art. I just think <laughs> are so funny. I'm so sorry if that's like offensive to anyone. But I love they're it. they're just hilarious to me. So I have As so I wear a shirt that says dump him. <laughs> Can you read my son? Well, that depends. Yeah, and she's like, I just love 
I, I just think they're funny. You yeah. know, I obviously love they're weird looking vaginas too. But I have, I feel like they're too beautiful to make fun of. Sorry, I love but that. you know, like when it comes to it's like yeah, turn it into an alligator. It's hilarious. So would that be your favorite thing that you have in your house of like weird art or probably like, yeah. yeah. I love my titty bowl too. I have a titty bowl and it's just like a bunch of tits. I love it. That's great. Imagine growing up and your mom just has like a titty bowl. <laughs> now she does. <laughs> Some of it is thrifted. Some okay. of it is like great artists. Um, mm. For instance, the penis animals are done by this guy named Fauna from Israel. He's really cool. He handcrafts them all and paints them. And then the titty bowl is Jonathan Adler, which is a really well known uh, <laughs> cool. designer. Yeah. And then a lot of the other stuff is just things I find along my journeys, traveling. I was always yeah. the girl that when I was on tour, I didn't care about like sleeping all day and partying all night yeah. I would you know party a little and then wake up and find the area of town that had like the vintage store yeah. so I, when I was in Sweden I was like vintage shopping and, and all over the world and I, I just found so yeah. many cool things from those travels and you know being kind of obs not obsessed but being someone who loves collecting beautiful interesting things mm -hmm. at the same time I don't have a lot of attachment to things mm -hmm. like when people break things in my house I've never gotten mad I've never felt like no it's kind of yeah. like well that's part of it it is what it is it is, it is what it is like I'm, I might have a nice sweater and spill something and I'm gonna just it's not it's a weird thing where they don't conflict with each other well, that's like, just how you should be about I think life in general yeah. like when something does not go the right way or there's mm -hmm. just like an annoying mistake or just like yeah. that kind of stuff it's like why let that like really take a toll on you exactly why not just I, keep it moving it, and be like that's I agree life. I agree and it's it was meant to happen like I'm a big believer you weren't meant to have that shirt anymore mm -hmm. it was time to get mm -hmm. out of your closet you know yeah. so someone spilled some wine on it like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I believe in that truly but you have been like similar to me in a way in this industry traveling like you went on tour and I would say like a very young age mm -hmm. so you moved out to LA at what age I left home at 15 wow. to Nashville, yeah. left Nashville at 17 to LA, been here for ever since, 26 now. Did you move with your parents? Mm -mm, never. Fully alone Fully at 15. Alone. Got emancipated so I could even sign my own deals because wow. I had to have uh, like guardianship over myself to get like the record label money and mm -hmm. the advance and all that stuff. So that's a lot of yeah. Like, it wasn't even personal just, towards my parents. It was just yeah. so I could like sign. <laughs> she said, I was a boss bitch. I needed to be in control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I love that. So you went to Nashville at 15 and mm. then L.A. at when did you say? 17. 17. Mm -hmm. So getting into this industry and just being young and I'm mm -hmm. guessing working with a lot of adults, like yeah. how do you feel like that affected like your journey and process of like, you know, growing yeah. up, I would say. Because for me and like being in it super young, it definitely, of course, there's like trauma and just different things that happen that like I feel like if I was older and just more mentally like on the yeah. same level yeah. as the adults I was working around, I would have been mm -hmm. more prepared or could like say things better. But because I was young, younger it was like harder yeah. for me to like <clears throat> that power control like did you go through that at all for me personally I think because it was so my choice and I was so strong-willed in it and my parents were like what do you they believed in me but it was terrifying That's to good. let their daughter go and I always felt really old when I was young so when I was like a tiny little girl like three mm. four years old I would stare in the mirror and I would leave my body and I would be like what is Maddie who is Maddie and I would look at myself so intensely that I would like go outside of myself like you were outside of yourself looking at yourself yes talking 100 like yourself. I, I wasn't a it was like leaving the human form in a way and it was really uh something like I felt the weight of the world at a very young age you know my mom would find me like crying in a dark closet like I was very emotional and very understanding of things and I remember like wanting to be friends with adults as a small kid wanting them to see me as their equal wanting them to treat me as an adult I remember oh. like talking to people when I was a kid and asking them to open up about their divorce and yeah. stuff and I'd be like four and I'm like I got you like you can talk to me you know I and I just that. wanted them to understand me and then in school you know I was always that girl that was cool with everyone but mm -hmm. not necessarily the most popular or the least for me it was just about like make sure nobody's ever eating alone you know or something like that Maddie. so I just wanted to be like a light for people but everyone didn't understand me yet so Growing up, like my best friend in school was my English teacher, and he was just like so. You would cool. go to him for lunch and stuff, that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, we weren't really allowed to, but I would go yeah. to him a lot, yeah, yeah, to hang out with him. And he pushed me a lot and inspired me, and and was one of the reasons I moved. Because when you're from a small town and you've never heard of anything of dreams, really, mm -hmm. you know, it, this might sound kind of hokey, but at the time, it kind of changed my mindset and everything. I was 15, and he gave me a book called The Secret, and this is just a book about manifesting. But I had never heard 
heard of manifesting. Mm. So I didn't, you know, know. So yeah. getting this was life changing. Mm. I remember at the time when my dad found it, he was like, this is blasphemous to Jesus or whatever, you know. Oh, because were they were your parents super religious too? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. And I was like, no, it's fine. I'm just You're like, like this flower I'm child. Just visualizing. <laughs> yeah, like, please. He said, this book is the devil. No. Yeah. Sorry. And so what had happened was I was 15. I had a boyfriend at the time and my mom found a pregnancy test I took because I, there was no way I could have been pregnant, but I didn't know enough about like sex to yeah. like, I could have thought that anything would have like <laughs> fingering me or something would have made me pregnant, you know? So <laughs> your parents also, I, I'm guessing never like had that conversation with you either. No, I never learned about like, you should use protection or anything. Like in Mississippi, I, you just don't talk about it. I don't get that. It's horrible. I don't, oh, let's not talk about it. Even though we all know that our kids are still going to do terrible. it. And now they're not, and now they're not going to know how to do it safely. Like that just never, it, it's never made it, sense It just sets me. you up for so many bad situations to mm -hmm. not be able to really protect yourself and like yeah. look out for yourself but um she found the pregnancy test she found the pregnancy test and she was like you're never leaving you're never going to nashville you're in so much trouble the like the only way i would let you go is if you did all of these things mm. And I found the secret, read it, started manifesting it, and did all the things on her list that she thought I would never achieve, which was like, you have to pay for everything on your own. You have to sign up for school online and finish there. You have to oh, wow. take drug tests. You have to join a church. You have to drive home every weekend. You know, wow. so many things that she was like, there's no way this girl's going to do all this. And then I was like, hey, <laughs> he said, I'm yes, ready. I will. <laughs> found a place, well, sold a saxophone, were, got a babysitting <laughs> job. Well, you were determined. Let's go. You were determined, though. And I feel like there's yeah. so many like creative people in this world that Mm -hmm. They have so much talent, but they don't have that other side of them yeah. that's like, I'm going to make this happen. Yeah. Like, I don't care how hard it is, how young I am, like, where I'm from, mm -hmm. what I, what everyone else believes in around me, you know, because it also sounds like you've just always been yourself and, like, going to school and school's so hard because I feel mm -hmm. like it's so like cookie school. cutter. Yeah. You have to fit into a certain box and some people choose to, like, fit into that box, aka, I feel like me, where I felt like I couldn't be myself, so I was more this way. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you were just like, this is who I am. Yeah, I'm it was make more of like a happen. fearlessness it was like it doesn't matter what's gonna happen we're not gonna think about the what ifs yeah. it's just gonna go for it but that's and, like so and it's something I try to carry with me to today because yeah. it gets harder as you get older a little mm -hmm. bit because when things don't always go exactly the way maybe you always saw them going you yeah. had such high hopes yeah you can lose perspective of for that sure. so it is something I try to like remember to always be fearless and just have that core belief in myself and never I letting that. that rock or shake me despite the circumstances of the industry or the world so yeah. so yeah being young moving there I really enjoyed being around older people yeah. I everyone never they so always you never told just me, felt like there was a not wow okay. no I, I think also because I think you got into it even younger you had your yeah. siblings with you your parents were helping out you guys were wearing matching outfits you did the kids bop <laughs> stuff like for me it was none of that it was like yeah. my parents were like terrified and I was just falls to the wall gotta do this yeah and I really wanted to be around older people because I was so sick of the circumstances I was in mm. and not being understood mentally mm -hmm. so to finally get to work and be with everyone around me was older at this point I, I was loving it and and they always made me feel like oh Maddie you just don't feel your age all that yeah. stuff and some people were pure and good and some people take advantage of that for sure you know so yeah. it goes both ways and yeah. that's really where the danger lies for me is is where the people who take advantage of your youth mm -hmm. come into play mm -hmm. so and we before you, you know how to protect yourself as smart as you can be and as much excitement as you have you don't always have all the skills to protect yourself the for right sure. way so when you went on tour, did you go on tour with Kygo? Is that what you're referring to? That was my when? first tour. Yeah. yeah, I went on tour with him when I was 18. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so did you bring anyone or you were just on the road with... My manager at the time Yeah, was it, with me. Was for, it ours? Yeah, for most of it, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so like going back to it, like when we first met, <laughs> I thought that Maddie... I'll never forget that night. ...hated me. Like, that is not my vibe with no, people. Like, I know. this was a bad night to me. I know, you. so when I say like when I met her and like she was the, one of the first it's people, rare. she really does a fairy energy. And like we hung out after this night, like after the first time meeting, yeah, and I was like, yeah. oh my God, she doesn't hate me. She's actually really, really nice. Yeah. Um, um, so we came to LA and we pretty much moved to LA because her manager at the time was like, you have to move out here. Like, this is where it's at. And he said something like one of the first times that I, when I first met you, he was like, oh, come over to my house. Like we're having a fun little get together. A couple of my other artists will be there. And it just sounded like a good fun time. And I think we got there before you. So we're like all sitting at the yeah, table yeah. eating or something. And mm. you came in with someone, a couple people. Boyfriend at the time, I think. Boyfriend at the time. Yeah. And I just, she looked at us and I, I could just I I didn't know why but she just looked pissed I was pissed and, and I it was wasn't like, on you at all <laughs> well no now knowing yeah. the story I'm yeah. like okay that's that makes sense but I was just so I was like oh my god she's mean I don't like
bag. <laughs> yeah, I was very mean that first night, and I do regret that because, you know, well, no. it is not ever good to treat people a certain... Now I know that, but at the time it was so triggering because, you know, I was I was about to get a plaque for the first time, mm -hmm. and it was a very, like, into now I wouldn't care, but back then it was, like, it was a very intimate thing, and they told me it was, like, a special thing for the few yeah. of us, and then I felt like they were using me to get to you guys and making it about this big show mm -hmm. to, like, look what we can do for you instead yes. of actually celebrating, like, genuinely as a family. It yeah. became this whole, like, let's use Maddie as a ploy yeah. to, to show these people that we can make them successful. Yeah. And that was just, like, I was, like, really, guys? Like, you're going to use me right now mm -hmm. on one of a very, like, intimate, special night for me to, like, yeah. you know? So that's why I was, no. like, and once I figured ick at yeah. them, but not at you guys. And I think it was just, like, I also just started my period. It was the first day of my period. <laughs> and this was back when I was, like, just coming out of a lot of abusive relationships and I was yeah. really insecure at the time. I hadn't come into terms yet with like, uh, you know, being cool around other hot girls and stuff with, mm. with guys because the past guys I had dated had treated me so terribly. So I remember that night your sister was like doing splits everywhere <laughs> and she was just like doing splits on and the ground. Yeah, and now if I would see that somewhere, I'd be like, fuck yeah, that's my favorite girl. Like I love that girl. Like I don't care who I'm dating, who's with me. I would be like, let's go. That's iconic. Yeah. But at the time with my boyfriend and my insecurities, I was also just like feeling insecure no and you and Tori I didn't know yet yeah, yeah. no and Tori my sister you guys have very similar like energy in the <laughs> yeah. way of like even what you were saying earlier like you both are more innocent like Tori even didn't like lose her virginity I think until like it was pretty late on or even have her wow. first kiss but she was always very like sexy and like loved to like show her mm -hmm. body off yeah, and just I love like it. Yeah. very similar I feel like to you where you're just like you're yourself and you're like in your feminine sexiness like yep. you're just super mm -hmm. comfortable with it but I didn't even know that other part of it was which a makes, trauma response all of yeah, it, it was but just, it makes sense I feel like when I've been the most insecure in my life mm -hmm. is when I seem the most mean but it's yeah. because I'm just like I'm mad hurting. I'm hurting and yeah. I'm mad and then that just comes off as like mm. I'm a bitch yeah you know so but that was that makes me so sad that yeah. like that's the space that you were in at that point I know it was you a know? hard time for me and yeah. I'm glad to not be there today and know that if she did a splits at a party now I would be like throwing bills on her and getting down with her and trying a <laughs> splits too <laughs> you know what I mean yeah, I'd be like well, teach me <laughs> Well, that Almost we were both, there. we're the same age, so we were 21 yeah, at that time, yeah, and yeah, yeah. 21 is still just, like, mm -hmm. so young, and once again, in these, in this career, in this world of, like, entertainment, it's just, it's really hard, I think, to, like, juggle different things, especially mm -hmm. if, like, mentally you're not super, super confident or secure with yourself, mm -hmm. like, it becomes so much easier the more, you know, yeah. I am me, and, like, no one can take that away from me. Oh, yeah, shit. and it's also, like, at that point, I was someone trying to be my truest, best self, but I was surrounded by a lot of not good people in my life you know mm -hmm. so having that kind of influence all the time it really didn't help the situations yeah. or help me be better you know yeah. it just took time to have to like separate from everyone mm -hmm. and start fresh and mm -hmm. get down to the root of myself and yeah. f figure it out like That's, we all have to do so. sometimes you literally have to like wipe the whole board off yep. and start from scratch literally so um that was me after my last breakup which i saw you like which also with these managers we went through our own things for sure with yeah. them but i am <laughs> thankful that it all happened because we met you it through was like it. school for me like for me that was a college experience you know I didn't yeah. go to college yeah and I just came out here so for me that was just a whole learning the business firsthand mm -hmm. and yeah. seeing how it can be and then we all hung out afterwards and like I said I was like oh she's a vibe yeah, yeah. I also I don't even know if I ever told you that I totally had a crush on you when like really yes! I would have never Are you serious never thought I that I felt like I was like because I didn't even know you were like bi back then, really right? not really I don't I was, feel like it ever came up really it probably just didn't come up I was definitely out I was waiting on you at the doubt because we never really hung but, out that much. We would just yeah, like, we would events. go to events and stuff. And then we, we got to, did a session or two. Yeah. And like, we got to see that we definitely get along. But yeah. we never got the chance to really talk about or like really hang out on a deeper level, one on one, or, mm. you know, to get to know each other. So I feel like I knew that you were into girls though, for some reason. Like, I feel like I everyone knew. assumes that about me. <laughs> so, because you're just a lover. I'm just a you lover. You just give energy. I yeah. feel like even how you talk, you're like, it's very flirty. Aww. But you're, I know you're talking normal, but like, right. it's, it just comes off. <laughs> It's almost like you're singing. She's like, yeah, uh-huh. I'm very happy time. I'm happy to be back. Yeah, no, I feel like I remember it was at like a Coke party or something. Yeah, not like, the Coke not, party. I well, had like on Coke, um, the drink. Yeah, the drink. <laughs> <laughs> you never, you never LA, know. In LA, you never know. In LA, you I never know. I remember the I'm outfits like, I wore to that. It was like a red uh, jumpsuit thing it was, and it a was little so hat. Cute. I, I would was like, never wear that hat now. I was like, so she is so cute. And then I remember, I think you did like a show or something and we went 
backstage or something afterwards. I have a photo of it on my Instagram. And I was like laying on the couch and you like laid on top of me. And I was like, <laughs> is she flirting with me? <laughs> but no, you're just like a flirty girly, mm -hmm. you know? Do a lot of girls, so you, a lot of girls I think that you're hitting on I love cuddling too. Like I'm just a Like you like, cuddle with your friends. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever like started to have feelings for one of your friends? No, because I've been through the whole thing before when I was younger of like having sex with your friends. Mm -hmm. And I've decided now in my life, like the people that are truly close with me are not people I want have sexual relations with mm. yeah and it, it's like my very 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 best friends it's just I don't want to go to them for that I just don't I want to keep them as that safe place yeah and not ever take it there because it can get so I feel like messy even if you're like oh we're gonna be cool about this and like here are the, our yeah, boundaries I could it's never always... risk one of them I just couldn't I mean my yeah. girlfriends are so close to me and they've been the ones that are in my life have been like my best friends for seven years wow. you know that's amazing I, I found them when I moved out here and they're the ones who like stood the test of time and I see them all the time and we're so close so I, love that. I just don't want them for that reason no I think it's good that you have that boundary <laughs> yeah and like I agree with it for myself like everyone's different even more recently I've been out for so long but I have been like in more queer spaces recently and mm -hmm. it's crazy how like many people like do sleep with their friends or it's just like a very messy situation yeah very casual like it's a, a lot right now I feel like it's like casual hookups which yeah. once again is fine yeah. but I'm like I'm a lover Mm -hmm. I have emotions. Like if I try to Pisces, do Pisces, baby. Yeah. Like <laughs> if double Pisces. Or, you know, anyone can have emotions. Yeah. But, but she, she's I very got, emotional. I got a laugh. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, just like sleeping with friends or like mm -hmm. trying to casually hook up with someone. I just feel like it would get so messy. So I'm always like, no, no, no. But then I feel like I have less fun. <laughs> Well, I think that, I think it's about just the closeness of the friend and if you ever saw the potential there in the first place, you know, mm. like if you really believe this is someone you could have a great relationship with, that's yeah. different to me. And if it's someone who's not like a super close friend and like you can do that with them and it won't make it weird, cool. Yeah. But like my best, best friends, I, I could never risk them for that. I get it. Yeah, yeah, personally. Even with casual hookups, which I think is just such a thing in LA and with like our generation, mm -hmm. I just like, I can't do them. Like I have to feel super comfortable with someone to even enjoy it. Yeah. Or like, what do they call it? Like a demi sexual I think mm -hmm. that I think that that's what yeah. I am like I'm a make out whore I always say that I will enjoy <laughs> making out like for sure but when it comes to all of the things I'm like I just don't think I'll enjoy it mm -hmm. unless like I feel something for you if that makes any sense totally I understand yeah. you're in a relationship but like mm -hmm. like LA cult like culture is just so weird yeah I'm like you're in a relationship give me advice on how to find a girlfriend or a boyfriend in LA. um I think for me it's like go enjoy spaces that you enjoy mm -hmm. I've never personally met anyone over an app ever. Everyone I've ever been in a real relationship with has been, I was out at a comedy show, I was at a music festival, mm -hmm. I was on an airplane taking a flight. Like it was just places where I was just wanting to be, you know, living IRL. my life, maybe yoga class or yeah. things that you enjoy, I think is a good way to to meet people. And, you know, you're obviously have that flirty thing too and bring the vibe. So it's all about that, like just eye connection. Mm -hmm. and I will say though for me like the difference between dating um, men and women in LA is like I usually end up always in relationships with guys because I feel like way more guys pursue me mm -hmm. harder and mm -hmm. I never really know which girls are it's so hard right like into other girls it's hard to tell a lot of times unless you're going to s some event where it's like very much queer or or yeah. you know you're in a, a group of people yeah but it can be kind of a small circle yeah and um, so that that has made like dating women more challenging for me and then with dating guys I found that a lot of times there are they they do get intimidated uh, dating a bisexual girl because sometimes they try to think that you see women the way that maybe they saw women mm. and you have to kind of explain like well if I'm with you I'm with you and I don't look at the world and people that way mm. so it's not so yeah. a difference you have to worry if someone's coming over for a sleepover this or that like yeah. at the end of the day women as women have such a beautiful powerful bond on and mm -hmm. support for each other and mm -hmm. we're just a whole different energy for so sure. it's it's hard to explain to guys sometimes yeah. why they don't need to be so like intimidated by their women and just trust you know but just trust boys but sometimes it's, it's all good. girls it's all do good. i'll be here stealing your girls so you know <laughs> that i mean but like if someone can steal your girl it doesn't then, matter if it's a guy yeah. or girl if she can be stolen then you gotta it wasn't for you you gotta reflect on your relationship yeah <laughs> you if, gotta if you're, you if gotta look at more than yeah. just the sex yeah. of someone if it yeah. if they can be stolen in a way. But okay, you're yeah. saying, she's saying, it's
it's hard because I'm introverted. Oh, oh thank bum. you. It's hard because I'm like introverted. You are? Yeah, like really? I go to a lot of things, but I don't talk to a lot of people at the things. Okay. So it looks like I'm doing a lot. <laughs> it looks like I'm like out there having a fucking time. But like if I'm there with friends, I don't like venture out. Are you shy? I'm so shy. <laughs> and no one believes me because they see my dumb videos with my family on TikTok. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm in the comfort of my own home yeah. with my family. Of course I'm wild. Yeah. But like when I'm out, unless I get like a couple drinks in me, yeah, yeah. at first I am a little bit more like I'm not going to venture out of my friend group. So mm-hmm. I think that's what I have to do. Or maybe just like casually talk to the cutie sitting next yeah. to me on the flight. I think just like be open. And if it happens naturally, then don't be closed off to it. To yeah. it you know, just look yeah. around the room at least a few times. Yeah. <laughs> like, so you're in a relationship, but uh-huh. like a lot of your songs are, I feel like a lot of them are about your relationships. Yeah. A lot of them are about love and, and the stories I go through and, and stuff with that. Yeah. It's hard for me to move through something unless I've written about it. Mm. and it's always very brutally honest you always know where I'm at yeah. some people don't want to accept that they're just like cool song but I'm like <laughs> Did you listen like, to the lyric though? Because you should be worried. Oh, like have you like have you been like going through it at times and like you're like playing the song for them and they're just like, oh, mm-hmm. really? Oh yeah. And oh, like yeah. have you have have you had like exes to be like, don't do that again? If we ever do that again. No, I've never heard, had um, anyone try to suppress you. my creativity. Yeah. I think that Good. even if, even, and I've had people write bad songs about me, me hurting their heart or something, you know, really? maybe it didn't work out. Mm. But I always take it as a compliment yeah. because you're still a muse in mm. some way. You still mm-hmm. inspired someone enough to bring out a really raw emotion in them. And whether it be positive or negative, I think it's such an honor to have a song written about you. Even if it's like, you suck, you If it's horrible, terrible, horrible, like you're the you're trashest the person <laughs> in the world, yeah. that's not going to feel good. But you know. No, that's I, very I honestly do though still think that I would actually be okay with that yeah. because I still do think that it's like unlike the more toxic side like damn you're that badly hurt like really like mm. oh like yeah I don't know that's more toxic of me to say <laughs> but I feel like in general whether it's good or bad it's like it is kind of flattering I mean at the end of the day it's all about how you feel about yourself with the situation mm. and like only you and that person can really know what went down yeah. so if you feel good about the way you treated them and like yeah. how you handled it yeah. and maybe you don't and maybe you have to just say hey I didn't handle that 100% right mm-hmm. and I'm gonna do better next time mm-hmm. and that's okay that. too she's dropping bars it's like she's an amazing songwriter or something <laughs> it's like crazy I have a way with words she I has- am I am the uh, friend of the group that like writes all the text for everyone I'm like oh no 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 I'm like so that they're was- like what do we say I'm like got you beep beep beep, beep. they're I like need that's to- perfect I need so much help because my anxiety I'm like I'll it'll be the shortest text ever and I'm like showing it to my sister and I'm like yeah. is this okay and she's like you're either or or you Riley oh. yes I show this <laughs> <laughs> I actually, yeah my brother actually helps me a lot oh, I I'm like you're that. not dating me you're actually dating my brother he's a so good writer. He's a, <laughs> yeah he is yeah. but yeah it'll literally be like should I say dude or like I don't know like it'll be like the most dumb shiz and you're like here it doesn't matter which word you use mm-hmm. or some I don't think I've ever shown you something though and you're like that's terrible don't say that yeah I do overthink it. it. I need to. I, I need to trust myself more. 2024 is the year of trusting yourself, mm-hmm. believing in yourself. Have confidence um, in those messages. Literally. But that's interesting. So, because I feel like a lot of artists sometimes are like, that's how I express myself is in my music. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you're able to express yourself in real life in the same way as your music? Or is it harder for you to kind of like get things off of your chest when just talking to someone? I'm an open book for sure, but there's definitely some things I'll always keep to myself unless mm. it's in the song. So, I feel like if you want to know the full, 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 full everything, then listen to the songs I, that's a more recent thing i've done i used to be like too open with people and i mm-hmm. found that i like more of a medium place you I know like that. Yeah. yeah so it's it's something it's it's almost like discernment to me it's like mm-hmm. sometimes choosing not to say everything on your mind you know and it ends up being better sometimes to uh keep that's to so keep true. it's nice to have some things for myself i've never really had that everything's always been so out there for me so sometimes i kind of like having something just for me wow i can relate to that <laughs> so hard though yeah. because i feel like i share so much and it's good because like even what we were saying in the beginning of like talking about things about ourselves but we went through and just being vulnerable online can be mm-hmm. so like helpful healing to you it can be healing to other people but at the same time it is like you're giving a lot of yourself mm-hmm. and you don't actually have to give everything or you don't actually have to talk about something just because you feel like this would be helpful to other people yeah. sometimes you have to think yeah, am I okay yeah, yeah am I okay with this being out there but yeah I think as an artist in general so like well no I wanted to hear about tour do you mm-hmm. have like a crazy tour story that like something crazy <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, can you share it or no? Oh, don't have to use names. You don't have to if you don't want to. 
or just like funny or just whatever because i feel like tour is like such when people go on tour i've heard like a lot of artists just say some crazy stories and like shiz that you have to deal with yeah i mean the hardest thing about tour is just staying healthy because mm. you're just on the road she said this is the what's it called the <laughs> what's it when like your media train this is the media train yeah, answer the media train version i'm like i can't tell that story Ooh, uh, health is wealth when you're on tour make sure you drink your electrolytes yeah because it's like <laughs> when you the times that they offer to get the food it's like right before you go on and you don't want to eat it yeah and then you have to wait until 2 a.m driving through like you know a fast food place and yeah it's just you have to be really careful and you can yeah. want to drink too much want to party too much and you know it, yeah because for me like <laughs> I, I love nothing more than a hot toddy for stage what's a hot toddy a hot toddy what's a hot, hot toddy? tea whiskey honey and oh, lemon oh a hot toddy and it just warms you up inside i'm a big whiskey girl i Ooh, love whiskey is like, that like a southern thing yeah <laughs> it's like in my blood what's that song do you know that i'm gonna drink some whiskey classes hey. so uh, do you know so i don't want to see hey. the truth i'm gonna drink some whiskey <laughs> you know that song? i have heard that yeah. okay yeah mm -hmm. Did you ever think, did you ever do country music before? Because I feel like you're pop. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, the my favorite music that I relate the most to is just me on a guitar or a piano, just singer-songwriting. Yeah. Um, some of it could be classified as country. Mm -hmm. I like to think of it as uh, pretty limitless. Um, there's lots of different time periods that come through. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's genreless, I call it. Yeah. I never limit myself. I like to just connect to God, a source, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, like be a channel for that and be open to that. So the that. best songs I've actually written would be like, I'd wake up 7 a.m., take a little hit of my joint, yeah. go to the piano, and then just like say a little prayer, like use me, God, you know, and, and just let it come out. Let it flow. And those are the um, some of the best and quickest songs I've ever written, for sure. Wow. Yeah. Is there Are there any songs that, kind of what you were saying before, of like, I just don't want to share everything, that it's like a song that that you just love but you're like this will never come out because it's for me and just me that's the one place in life where I'll never do that because I feel like accepting this role of being an artist I accepted that part of that is sacrificing that for the music mm. so I, I'll always keep it real and open and share the music I might just not always say everything out loud yeah. talking yeah and then yeah. you also do you write a lot of songs for other people mm -hmm. like yeah. you're not even and, and that's a fun challenge in its own because yeah a lot of times when you're writing for someone they don't know how to get the story out themselves mm. so I like to treat it as a kind of a therapy session you know talk to them about what's going down take a lot of notes yeah. and then I take the story and, and make it all rhyme and you know make the chorus like the main point but go more into the details and the verses and the so pre cool. is kind of like a reflective moment about it all and maybe the bridge is just the last things you need to like get out and say and so I love when people are passionate about shit mm -hmm. like it's just so cool to hear someone you right now like talk about their art and like how they like do it and how your brain works like right. that's just so it's a puzzle and there's nothing yeah cooler than getting to give that to someone and at the yeah. end of the day they get to hear that and be like wow you actually told my story what's been like your favorite or just like oh my gosh I can't believe I'm working with this person moment well for me probably Adina Menzel because oh. I grew up loving her yeah, she's and amazing. she came to me so some artists when you're working with them they get in their way they mm -hmm. get in their own way they overthink you almost want to take them out of the room yeah. and just write it and bring them back yeah. <laughs> but but she is one of those artists <laughs> yeah she's one of those artists that knows her strengths she knows mm -hmm. her weaknesses and she knows my strengths and weaknesses and we are open to working with them together so she yeah. was never closed off to me any story she wanted to tell we were going in elaborate writing yeah. pages of notes you know days of diving in wow and we really hit stories I mean the one that came out was about when she met her now husband and how they were in a Broadway thing together and they were meeting at this hotel called Madison Hotel and having these rendezvous mm. and that just came out on her last project this year so oh. and then um, yeah that's so cool no, I that love was her. a big one for me you I was like, like ah! so many cool people though like even Celine Dion like, Celine Dion was icon. a pure legend she literally walked into the room she sang it with me first at the piano just because she knew I was giving away like one of my favorite songs I would cry if Celine I know, Dion it was, was singing it, next it was right to me. after she lost her husband and stuff so the song was yeah. literally about him and the love for him and it was just oh I got chills actually um, and she came in six inch heels sang for like five hours straight did not leave once to pee and barely took a sip of water was just going for it and then at one point I was in there with her like like doing my arms with the high notes oh my like, god we i like, would literally pass pictures out of us like you know orchestrating each other yeah, in vegas in her studio 
I was probably um, 21 then. Still like a baby. Yeah. But like, that's just such like, you've done so much cool shiz. And then you were on, I'm just like name dropping <laughs> right now, but it's fun because it's yeah, so yeah, yeah. cool. But like The weekend. The weekend. That was that? my that was my first ever opportunity in LA. We were both working with the same producer, Stefan mm. Macchio. He did Earned It with him and a few other songs. Mm. And he did uh, Wrecking Ball for Miley. And Did he write Wrecking Ball? He did. Yeah. Him and Mozella, who's an amazing writer. There might have been one other person. I'm not sure. But they wrote it because she was going through a breakup and he had that da, 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 piano mm. melody because mm. he's all about like making melodies on the piano yeah. and he would hear them for certain people. So he had like Maddie melodies that would come to him and we, we would work. I would hear them out. And I never had anyone do that because usually I just freestyle. Yeah. So it was pretty cool to have someone like being so intentional about me and my artistry. Yeah. yeah. Never had seen that before. But anyway, we were both work. He was working with The Weeknd at the time and working with me at the time. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to put me on. And The Weeknd wasn't even there. It was his song Angel. And he was like, Maddie, just try some stuff on this. And he so showed God. it to Abel the next week. And like Abel was at first like, hmm, like, play it again, you know. Were you and sitting then, there? No, he told oh. me. And then he <laughs> called me like, and he's like, he's keeping you on it. And I'm like, ah! That's you freaking know, like insane. It was my first big opportunity, and I've always been grateful yeah. to the weekend for that. And yeah, because um, even your voices together, like it's like mm -hmm. two angels. I really want to do more with him one day. Oh my god, you yeah, so putting did that you, out there. Did you watch his, his show? Which one? Uh, what was it called? What was it called? The uh, Idol. I actually yeah, tried idol. out for her part. Yeah, you would have killed that. I've tried out for several big roles. I tried out for Chloe Cherry's part in Euphoria. Oh wow. I tried out for Lily Rose's part in The Idol, and I tried out for Madonna in the new Madonna movie that ended up getting canceled that the girl from uh, Ozark Scott. Oh, okay. You know, the blonde yeah, girl. Yeah. She's I forget her name, but she's so freaking good. Hey, you're going to get one soon. I yeah, so it. it's, I've gotten to try out for some really cool roles yeah. and I hope I get one soon for sure. No, you will. Because I do kind of want to act too. Like, I think it's Same. fun. Yeah. Okay, I, oh, yeah. yeah. Have you been oh. trying out for stuff? And I haven't started trying out yet, mm -hmm. but doing like the music video this past time mm -hmm. with I was in Zolita's music video. Love that. If you yeah, haven't amazing. seen it. Bloodstream. Woo! So good. But there's a lot of acting scenes and even ones that she hasn't put out yet but mm -hmm. like where I almost had to cry like all this different stuff and mm. I worked with an acting coach before because I was like I don't want to look dumb you know but it was really cool just like channeling someone else and yeah. like also bringing some of you through that and just like it sounds weird but it was almost like sometimes when we're just ourselves all the time like I'm I get tired of myself <laughs> <laughs> so like that's where art is cool though because yeah. you can like channel someone else and just completely mm -hmm. be this other being for yeah. like a second yeah. and not that it was like crazy acting work it was like more campy and fun for this video but it was really like oh wait I do want to get into this mm -hmm. it definitely sparks something and, and yeah. you still do get to play like this role and it's very exciting it's so exciting so you're just like full-blown like going for that too now I want to see you like the next Laura Croft or something oh. like something like hot you know yes. like if they had like a live action Kim Possible or something like you that could be, be the dope. next Kim you know like that <laughs> outfit would look so fire on <laughs> you with the green pants and the black shirt oh my god I'm gonna manifest <laughs> like, that like little red wig <laughs> Yes, I'm going to manifest that <laughs> yes. now. But yeah, acting is fun. I feel like as creatives, like why put yourself in one why box? Why limit yourself? I feel like we have so much pain <clears throat> to pull from yeah. that why not put it into that too, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I love that. <laughs> and then, well, speaking of music videos, you yeah. just came out with a music video like a <laughs> <Yoo -hoo>. month. <laughs> It's Which I cool. love because I was seeing her post all this like, is it album art? Is that the right word? Or just like art in yeah, general just and photo art, shoots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the character. It was, it was a character that was built. Yeah. yeah. But what, were you inspired? They were like in all of these. Riley will put a little screen grab of the video up. But were you inspired by like the Charlie's Angels? That was a moment of it. Yeah, okay. we definitely. That was one of the moments of it. The Pied Piper, that, that tell was a big inspiration for this video. Yeah, I mean, it combines my Southern and Swedish roots, this song, because yeah. I'm mostly Swedish. Swedish, but I grew up in Mississippi mm -hmm. so it's like a bit of the, the song for me is very comedic okay. that, and I thought it was kind of funny it's mm -hmm. not necessarily something that's gonna move you in this emotional way yeah. but it, it kind of it's uh it's an earworm it I reminds that. me of that uh, <laughs> I don't know, I know what you're doing you need to, you need to you do? split that part too on Twitter. is it a song it's called seventh element or seven something and it's like this guy goes <laughs> such a banger but it's so weird yeah and I wanted to make something like that and when I, I wrote that. you who originally I was in Sweden writing with friends and it was 4 a.m. coming home from the studio delusional delirious mm -hmm. hadn't slept jet lag and we get in the car and the car dinger I still have the voice memo is going ding 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 and I was like <laughs> ding 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 
And I started oh like jamming God, to it. And I was like, oh, that's kind of hard. Hold up. I took a little voice memo. It was like, ding, 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 ding. And then I went to the studio the next week in that's Stockholm. So cool. And I was like, listen, I got an idea. It's going to be weird, but just trust me. Just let me get it out. So I even wrote a song before it just yeah. so I could be like, okay, I gave you that song now. Let me get this weird one out. I love that though. And that's what this came from. This is what this started from. Yeah. Wow. And then like just working also with like Zoe on her video mm -hmm. when you're on set, like, are you also like kind of like directing it? Like is a lot of it coming from you or do you have like a team of people that it's like, they're doing this, they're doing that. And I'm mm -hmm. just kind of like, I wrote the song and I'm showing up or do you feel oh, no, like I'm so hands on yeah. in the whole process. Like yeah. I creative directed that video and then the director death cats is just insane the yeah. producer brie it was a mostly female team Love that. um with wild minds that came together mm -hmm. and we just combined all of our visions yeah. and ultimately we end up you know the the concept is like these milk maidens well i don't know if i should tell you maybe you should just see it first oh. should we watch it yeah i want to see your okay. reaction right. to the ending and then read the statement at the end too because that's really important because the video is actually also about factory farming and how oh. effed up it is are you vegan i'm not vegan Vegan, but I still don't believe in factory farming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's she absolutely said, terrible. She said I still eat meat. I, I think vegan is such an amazing thing to aspire to, and I'd love to be that one day. And I, there's lots of meats I would never eat because I just think it's terrible. Um, and I don't eat a lot of meat anyway. But I don't think we're gonna get the world to stop eating meat tomorrow. But in the meantime, the meat that they do eat needs to be, uh, you know, not disgusting, not inhumane. Uh, it's just horrible the way that we treat animals and and do things. And um, I just don't agree with it at all. So Preach, I think that's something that we have to stick up for the animals and give them a better life. And if people are going to do that, they need to do it in a more humane way. I know it might not be ever fully humane because you're killing something, but it shouldn't be as terrible as it is. So I... I'm trying to, you know, baby steps. But I, yeah. I want that to that's a good starting point for people. I no, think I love that. Is to at least fight for the quality of their meat if they're going to yes, do it. Yes. Yeah. No, literally everything that you just said. Yeah. I mean, I've been vegan for years now and yeah. I'm not even the vegan that's like, oh, you can't eat meat at dinner with me or like <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. I judge ever. But I, I think it's even amazing that you're like, I'm aware of this mm -hmm. and like I'm taking steps or even if you didn't become vegan, it's just good to be aware yeah. and to like try yeah. to help in your own way and, and through your art. Yeah. So that's cool that that's like a little <laughs> hidden gem. But OK, yeah. okay let's watch let's it. See what, you think. what is it called? Yoo-hoo. Yoo-hoo. <laughs> By Maddie Noise. Well, 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 well. Hi there. Can I get a ride? <laughs> I'll take you anywhere you want to go. Is there a town nearby? I'm so lost. It's the voice, oh, Maddie. Sure What's your name, it's sweetie? Honey. Maddie Noise, CEO of milk and connoisseur of cream. Oh, you <laughs> don't say. You got some milk for me and the boys? Oh, you bet we do. Ah! <laughs> Get in, it's girls. It's those flirty eyes. <laughs> it's those flirty eyes. <laughs> Good. So very weird, but also a good meaning. And, we love weird though. And it was great to build a world around this. It, yeah. It's so cool that, you know, often when you put a song out, you only have like maybe a month of material in your head to kind of make some reels or this or that. But yeah. this I was able to like do live art installations with. I did live milkings of William, one of the guys in the videos where we went oh on Hollywood God. Boulevard and he was like screaming and I was milking him. And we had the signs that were like milkmen instead of cows oh and all my that God. stuff. And so it's just been so fun to like actually build a world around this character. I which love that. Is you don't always get to do that with a song and, and I feel so inspired with it. I love that. No, I mean the message behind it, the imagery. <laughs> we're going to put a bunch of the image. Yeah, just. <laughs> yeah, that is no, the wildest part. It's sure. wild, but I feel like that's just you. Yeah. Like you have, you're obviously insanely talented, but it just seems like throughout your life in general, you're like, I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah, what And I I'm going to be bold yeah. and I'm going to be open and I'm going to like push the messages that I believe in. Yeah. And I feel like that's so, like a lot of people are just so scared to do that like what would be your advice to people to be like it's okay to push those boundaries and like be you yeah I think it's just about like I don't I don't always um push things but I don't deny them when they need to 
be. So it wasn't like I was searching for this, you know, moment of shocking people. It just naturally came and yeah. made sense. And I believed in it and I felt comfortable with pushing it. How do you get away from that fear of judgment from like others? Because when I feel it comes like to I... creativity, I can't even worry about what people think. You know, it's just it's mm -hmm. almost like I don't even I'm so sometimes removed from it all that like sometimes it's hard to even believe that anyone out there even listens to it. My song or cares about me like and that, I'm not saying that from a self deprecating place as in like because I know people care and I actually has made me care so much more knowing that um, but it's more of like a very humbling place of you know it's I, it's not why I do it you yeah. know it's like I do it because I want to get this art out there mm -hmm. and of course I want it to reach the world but it just feels good to be true to myself yes. you know yes why yeah. live any other way yeah but it, I do think it's easier said than done mm -hmm. and it's wild even that you had parents and like an upbringing that that wasn't like my parents preached that to me so much growing up but it yeah. was still so hard to even believe in myself and believe in myself so for you to have that just in you yeah and well, I mean you're yeah. human I so. started like that yeah. and then I had my freedom stripped away for years being in label. the label system um everything was controlled I was lucky if I could put out a song a year and I was writing you know sometimes eight albums a year I was wow. writing constantly wow. and all my friends and I knew the songs but no one ever got to hear them they were in a box so when I finally separated from all of that I had it was and I don't want to compare myself to someone in prison because this is so different but you know when people get out of jail and they're like I'm free but then they end up right back in jail it's like when I was free finally I couldn't wait for the day to finally be free I never felt so depressed and lost I never mm. felt so I don't know what to do and all I wanted was to have that and when mm. I finally had it it was the most isolating feeling in the world wow. and it took years to come back to myself and I'm only just this past year finally getting to drop songs independently yeah. and finally getting to even understand what it, it means to be and put out things that are genuinely me yeah. so right now it is a total you have that freedom now. learning experience of where I'm finally learning to enjoy the freedom and I'm not ending back up in something mm. bad and I just had to take years honestly to rebuild my whole mind and wow. restructure everything I knew yeah. and like you said just wipe the slate clean that's all you can do sometimes yeah. but so what's next for Maddie Noise we're writing songs mm -hmm. we have go check it out on YouTube <laughs> the music video is insane we're gonna show some parts but <laughs> that thing right there, that that fun thing. It's an earworm. Um, we're in. We're getting into acting. Mm -hmm. What's what's coming up? What what should the people be looking for? Um, I have an album coming out, Rainbow Syndrome. It's called. Mm -hmm. It's about, uh, like I said, not limiting yourself to a genre. Um, you'll find something on there for everyone. It just goes through the whole realm of emotions and sounds, and it kind of the stories pull it all together. So I definitely want to release that album, and I have a lot of other stuff after that. I want to keep, you know, working with artists and trying to break into the sync game more and build up a new team now that I'm for the first time like fully independent I don't have managers I don't have a label I don't have a publisher so I'm just now starting to like take meetings and show people this new music yeah. and being comfortable again to even entertain a team again because mm -hmm. now I know how to like protect myself better yeah. so now it's just a fun time of like uh, opening myself and seeing what's meant for me in this mm -hmm. project and mm -hmm. praying the right people come in mm -hmm. and that we really do this thing and we can make it sustainable and like the biggest goal was it to be to get to go on tour yeah. and go and meet everybody and like I love in-person interactions mm -hmm. like every show I've done I've stayed after and met every person that wants to meet me and I love it I love it yeah there's nothing that means more to me I love it just as much as they do yeah. if not more mm -hmm. so I really look forward to just hopefully getting to get back out in the world again I love that yeah. I need to see you perform like yeah. ASAP I need like, to do more I, shows. It's please. hard. I know. I love playing live. It's please. just I don't have a band or any of that yet, but I it's, did. Yeah, it's truly like once again, you just have like this like ethereal like even on stage, there's just like a very mm -hmm. sensual like vibe that is just so cool to see live. But in general, guys, Maddie <laughs> Noise, the freaking coolest ever. Yeah, um, <laughs> me. I feel like it, it's, it's kind of great like mm -hmm. to talk and we we hung out like a minute ago. Yeah, but I feel like just to see both of our growth. Yeah, and like Seriously. feeling more confident in ourselves from like when we met six mm -hmm. years ago to mm -hmm. now and that's like all that you can hope for with like other creatives that you meet is just that maybe it's not even like they blow up but just that they're becoming themselves more and more and like yeah. still chasing their dreams and growing like, in the right ways yeah so yeah. I'm so happy that we're I'm both, so happy we're growing and yeah. we're constantly growing but I was so happy that you wanted to come on in general and, I'm honored and that, share you, that you wanted to have me I think you're incredible I think your bravery and the way you put yourself out there and everything you do you can just 
tell you're such a genuine, amazing person that so many people look up to, and you're so Thank humble you. for just how wow you are. So yeah, <laughs> thank you. No, I appreciate. So I've I appreciate always that. just loved um, watching you, and I just adore you a lot. I so. adore you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna cry. I'm a Pisces. You can't do this to me. Alrighty, guys. But this was such a fun one of my favorite pods for sure, and everything like I said that you said. If you guys don't know her already, she is Maddie Noise. She is insanely talented singer songwriter just put out a new music video go check it out online has a lot more coming an album this year so uh, thank you so much maddie once again for coming on and how do we end this amazing podcast thank you for having coffee with kira (laughs) thank you maddie